Hi team, um, welcome to this uh, video for, vel for vel um, velocity time graphs, which is the second video for chapter nine on constant acceleration. Um, last time we looked at displacement time graphs, today we're looking at velocity time graphs. Um, I'm gonna start by just recapping our three key variables, the definitions of them. Um, so we should know from last time that displacement, and we label that as S, is the distance in a straight line between where an object is and the origin or where that started. Um, velocity v is the rate of change of displacement and acceleration a is the rate of change of velocity. We also know the kind of mathematical definitions of those. The rate of change of displacement means that it's the change in s over the change in t and we know that for acceleration the change of velocity, rate of change of velocity is the change in v over the change in t. Um, so last time we were looking at a displacement time graph, we're now going to start thinking about a velocity time graph. So we've got velocity on the y-axis as opposed to displacement. Um, and similarly to last time, we're going to be looking and, and using the gradient of this graph. Now, some of you might already know what the gradient of this graph represents, but I'm going to kind of show you what it would represent um, from kind of first principles. So we're going to look at the gradient. So the gradient is the change in the y the change in the y axis over the change in the uh, x axis. So change in y over change in x. Now, in this case, that's the change in the velocity because velocity is on the y axis and that over the change in the time, okay, because time is on the x axis. So my gradient then is the change in velocity over the change in time. Now that tells us straight away, because we know that acceleration is the change in velocity over change in time, that the acceleration is the gradient. Okay, So the gradient of my graph represents the acceleration of the body being represented by that graph. Um, so we'll look at how we can calculate with those. Uh, if I want to find the acceleration of the object in part A, um, all I need to do is, because I know that acceleration is the change in V over change in T, okay, which is the gradient, I just need to find the gradient of the line in A. To do that, I'm going to do 15 minus 0, so that's the change in Y, 15 minus 0, over the change in X, or the change in T, which is 10 minus 0. Now, 15 divided by 10 is 1.5 meters per second squared, and our value is positive. Okay, We've got a positive gradient, we've got a positive acceleration. So it's as easy as that. Um, what I'd like you to do now, please, is find the acceleration in the other three parts. So pause the video to have a go yourself, and then I'll show the answers in a second. Great, so those three, we should have an acceleration of zero meters per second for that first thing. We can kind of guess that. If the gradient is the acceleration and there's no gradient, there's a flat line, that means the acceleration must be zero. For part C, I've got a gradient of one meter per second squared. Um, the change from 25 minus 15 over 30 minus 10. And lastly, I've got negative 1.25 for this last portion of in D. So my gradient here is negative 1.25. Really important here that we're um, clear that uh, this needs to be a negative number. Okay. So our acceleration is negative but my, because my gradient is negative. Now we'll look in a second about describing this graph, um, but that's that's telling us that at this point it's my velocity is is slowing, is, is decreasing, okay? So my, my body would be decelerating, okay? Back down to rest where velocity is zero. Um, if I was asked what the magnitude of the acceleration was at this point, then I'd, I'd be able to say there's 1.25, okay? The magnitude of this is 1.25, but the acceleration as a vector, because this negative is showing me a direction, is negative 1.25. Okay, so um, that's finding uh, the gradient, which is the acceleration of a graph. The other thing we're actually going to be wanting to look at is, is finding the displacement from a graph. And there's a specific way we can do that. Now, again, this might be something that some of us are aware of, but I'm going to show us from those principles why this works. Now, because I'm interested in the displacement and I've got a graph which has velocity and time, I want an equation that links velocity, time and displacement. So I'm going to use this one, that velocity is the change in the displacement over the change in time. Now, I want to find a change in displacement. That's what I'm interested in. I've, I've said I'm interested in to find the displacement from this graph. So I want to rearrange my equation by multiplying both sides by the change in t. And I'm going to get that v times by the change in t gives me the change in the displacement. Okay, So that any change in displacement is velocity and the change in time. Okay, Now, this does assume that we have constant velocity, really, that I've not got any sense of that velocity changing, but it's useful for us at this point, and it's a kind of a general suggestion of, of how we do this. Um, but because we've got a velocity times by a time, and I've got velocity on one axis and time on the other, 
That means actually when I multiply these two variables, I'm finding an area on this graph. Okay, so that's telling me that the area under this graph is my change in displacement. Okay, and I can kind of show that through the units. If my displacement in meters, I've got meters per second times by seconds, I'm going to get meters. Okay, so the area under a graph multiplying my two axes together, that gives me an area. The area of the graph is the change in the displacement. Um, so quite simply, I'm going to show us how we might calculate that. This is the key factor, remember, the area in a graph is the change in displacement. So if I'm asked to find the displacement of the object in the part A, okay, any change in displacement, then I'm going to go, right, I know that the change in displacement is the area under a curve. Now in this case, not curve, it's a straight line, but the area under a curve. The change in the, the change in uh, the area under that curve, sorry, is it's a triangle. So I've got 15 as the height, 10 as the base, and then I'm going to divide them by two because I've got a triangle. Okay, so it's just finding the area of a triangle. I'm going to get the, the change in the displacement is 75 meters. So the body during that time covers 75 meters. Um, it's as simple as that. I'm going to ask you to do the other three areas on your own. The one thing I want you to be aware of is part C. Okay, so part C is a specific shape, which and there is a formula for the area of that specific type of shape. Or we can treat it as a compound shape and separate it into two different shapes. Okay, so I'd like you to please to find the displacement in each of these sections, please. Um, pause the video and have a go. Great, so you should have these answers uh, for the displacements or the changes in displacement in each of those parts. For part B, I've got uh, just a rectangle, so I've got 15 uh, as the height, sorry, and the the base of this is 20 minus 10. If we've done 20 the whole way along, we've not done it correctly, so we need to do 20 minus 10. Okay, so 15 times by 10 is 150. For part C, I've got two ways, depending on how we've done it. I've mentioned we can either do it as a compound shape, which is this method at the top, Okay, that's the triangle on top, so that's 10 times by 10 divided by 2, multiplied by the area on the, of the bottom rectangle. Or we can treat it like a trapezium, so this is a trapezium rule for area. I've got two straight lines, okay, which are A and B, so that's 15 and 25. Um, I add them together, divide it by 2, and then I multiply it by the distance between them. So that's A plus B over 2 times H. Um, that gives me the same answer, reassuringly. Okay, So any way we find the area there, we're going to get the right answer of 200 metres covered between 20 and 30 seconds. And for part D, um, a, a simple triangle. 25 is the height, 20 is the base. Multiply them together, divide them by 2, get 250 metres covered. Okay, so we know two things now. We know how to find the acceleration and the displacement for the velocity time graph. Um, I also need to be able to describe what's happening. So I'm going to show us how we can do that. It's very similar to how we did it on the previous thing when we're describing displacement time graphs, but I'm going to describe the motion in each of these four sections. Every single time you do this, you'll notice that I start by talking about what is happening to the velocity. That's my first point of call. Okay, I'm interested in what's happening with the velocity. The velocity time graph is going to show us how velocity changes with the time, so that's where my interest lies. So for part A, I've started by saying that the velocity of a body is increasing over time from 0 to 0 to 15 meters per second, and it is therefore accelerating. Okay, I'm giving evidence of why I can say that it's accelerating. There's a change of velocity over time, which is the definition of acceleration. I can say as the line is a straight line, that the acceleration is a constant value. I already know that the gradient of that line is, is the acceleration, and so the acceleration is at a constant rate. Okay, it's a constant value. For part B, I'm going to do the same thing, always the velocity. I'm going to say the velocity of body is constant during the time period B. The body is therefore moving at a constant velocity of 50 meters per second, and it has no acceleration. Constant velocity means that acceleration equals zero. That will always be true, because that's my definition. Right? My acceleration is a change in velocity. There's no change. There's no acceleration. During the time period C, I can show that my velocity is changing from 15 to 25. So again, I'm saying that it is accelerating. Um, now, obviously, when you're answering these questions, you can put figures in there. That's absolutely fine. You can calculate what the acceleration is. We've already done that, so I didn't want to. I didn't see the need to put them in here. I know you've already done that. You've already been uh, done a good job of that. Um, but I can say the body's accelerating again. I'm going to say that the line is straight and the acceleration is constant. And here I can do a bit of comparison. Okay, um, C is a less steep line. Okay, um, than in A, and so the acceleration is lower than in A. Okay, so the, the the body is accelerating more quickly in A than it is in C, or more slowly in C than it is in A. 
And for part D, I can say, and this is the, probably the hardest one, that the body, the velocity of the body decreases from 25 meters per second to 0 meters per second over the time period. Now that means there's a negative acceleration, which I can call a deceleration. Okay, a negative acceleration, which I can call a deceleration. Um, the line is a constant negative gradient, so the magnitude of the acceleration is constant. I'm throwing the word magnitude in here because I can say it kind of makes a sense because of the magnitude of the gradient, okay? A key term that I can use when I'm describing um, these graphs. But if I'm describing the motion, the key thing to focus on is what is happening to the velocity and therefore is it accelerating or decelerating? That's the key thing that the curve is going to be telling us at each point. Um, now that's all you need for the uh, for the sheets and for the pre-quiz. I'm just going to give you one extra slide, which is some useful notes that I'd recommend pausing and taking down. Um, and this summarizes how we deal with displacement time graphs and velocity time graphs. Um, and this table shows us these are the different graph types. And I've added in one at the bottom, I'll explain in a second. But the graph types and the quantities, the different types of the quantities. And this is where they are on the graph. Okay, so for instance, this is a bit of a reference. If I know I want to find the acceleration from a velocity time graph, I'm going to write the acceleration on a velocity time graph as the gradient of the curve. Okay, so this is some useful uh, notes for you. So please do pause and, and copy this down. Um, and as I say, you're unlikely, and I've added one extra one in, you're unlikely to be examined on acceleration time graphs, but they complete the pattern quite nicely. So that's why I've added that in there, and I think it's useful and kind of completes our understanding. Um, but once you've made good notes of that, um, my recommendation is that you then, or kind of, uh, you then move on to the pre-quiz. Um, and once you finish that, you can then move on to finishing uh, nine point two. Okay. Um, so good luck. Any questions? Let us know.